Hello and welcome to the heavily customized region of Coniferia here in City Skylines. Our region is approaching a population of 50,000, which is quite nice. The streets are full of people, the highway system is seeing good use, and so is our public transport options, buses, trams and commuter rail lines. In today's build, we'll be filling out an empty area in the southern part of Port Douglas with a very highly detailed, beautiful park full of nice scenery uh, before we move to a hillside northwest of downtown to develop the wealthy neighborhood of Gold Hill, which will feature some very interesting mixes of Montreal row houses and old expensive houses and provide quite a stark contrast to all the skyscrapers just nearby. And if you enjoy my content, Hit the like button and consider subscribing to never miss out on new uploads. Nearly 90% of my regular viewers aren't subscribed, so maybe you just forgot to. Anyways, thanks in advance. Alright, so a little heads up for this episode. Uh, it's probably gonna be a little shorter on the voiceovering and just much more time lapse than usually, uh, which I hope you'll still find enjoyable. I will try and pick some music that I find nice. Of course, it's very subjective, so there's that. But I think I'm I'm getting a cold or something. My voice is a little coarse and same for my throat. So yeah, fun times coming up. Uh, yeah. I, I hope I'll I'll be able to dodge it, but it uh, doesn't feel great right now. So uh, more time lapsing and less voiceover. Um, what you'll see me start out with here is just filling in this empty lot that we've had for the longest time here in the downtown Port Douglas and continuing the theme of a really, really densely populated high density city. I am uh, using procedural objects quite extensively uh, here to just take this uh, pretty basic 4x4 skyscraper from the workshop and instead turning it into uh, two skyscrapers with a bit of a more interesting shape that were obviously built uh, by the same developer developer it's the same development but uh, but the buildings are you know different heights they have different footprints and yeah it's just one of the ways that I love to use procedural objects to just make make the whole thing a little more unique basically.
we're moving on to the actual park, which is this pretty large plot of land where we've just had some random trees placed for the, the longest time. Uh, and that's something I always end up doing because I can't stand having like super empty areas on my map. I'll rather just fill them with trees until I get around to developing them. I think uh, one caveat that you should be aware of if you want to do the same is that this is going to absolutely tank your FPS. But I guess by now, you know, we're at about 9,000 custom assets in Conifera or something like that. I'm pretty used to having a brutally low FPS, so yeah, I've been uh, marked by war or something like that. Anyways, the basis for the park is uh, basically just these very, very nice uh, concrete uh, pathways for pedestrians. Uh, that I that I spread out here to create sort of a, just a random layout. Just make sure that there are like two big routes and gotta have some restrooms. You know that's pretty that's good public service. Non-pay restrooms even. So yay, uh, I'm saving the world here. I am going to add so much flora and trees and bushes to this park. You won't believe it at the very end. And some of you will probably prefer like a a cleaner look, but if you are a regular here on the channel, you'll know by now that I'm a big sucker for nature in general. So I'm just going to squeeze as much in terms of beautiful flora that I absolutely can into this park. Um, and do a bit of detailing surrounding the park as well as we do here. But we're going to end up with some cool stuff uh, on the park. Some actual tourist attractions. And I'm going to turn it into a functional park as well uh, by, by uh, using a... A little trick with some custom park entrances where I can remove the the gravel underneath and I don't have these park gates from the uh, the vanilla DLC what's it called park life I don't even remember but I don't like the gates so I create my own custom entrances it's, it's what you will see me do here actually and it works quite well uh, but I'm gonna leave you guys with some more time lapsing while we just make this park a very, very nice place to be by creating uh, nice piers you can use. Uh, lots of good stuff. And uh, I'll, I'll get back to you when we've got more uh, different stuff coming up, which there will be more of.
I'm going to squeeze some more high density stuff in uh, on this awkward sized lot right next to the park. Um, because with all this park ground, I don't think it would be realistic to keep this as a small park as well. But I'm not going to occupy this entire space. I'm just going to steal some of it and then the remaining half will be uh, a little park walk uh, on its own that actually turned out pretty cozy. Um, now, I, it's not because I insist on using procedural objects for everything in the city, but we are working with pretty hilly terrain. We are working with uh, weirdly shaped lot sizes. Uh, and these are some, you know, nice, big, beautiful buildings that I'm trying to fit in here and, and make them look seamless. And I just find that, yeah, using procedural objects to, to do that is, is just a massive help. And whenever I... I turn buildings into procedural objects. I always place down some block services to ensure that they are actually functional and that they function the way they should. Because otherwise, you know, it always it feels a little empty to do this. Uh, you know, because you are essentially just turning the building into a prop. Um, block services goes a long way to kind of fix that feeling for me, but it isn't perfect. Uh, anyways, the like skyscraper there on the right you just saw, I made sure to remove that. It felt a little too, I don't know, intrusive, I guess. What I'm trying to do here is create a nice little park where we've got this elevated uh, wooden pathway that is going to cut through uh, much of the bigger park. Um, I think I end up calling them South Shore Natural Gardens, maybe, because this is technically part of the South Shore neighborhood, which is the neighborhood immediately south of downtown Port Douglas. And it's pretty upscale and expensive, very popular with uh, with young people because it's just a little more affordable than uh, living downtown. I mean, it's still not affordable. You're not going to be able to save up and you're never going to be able to buy a property as a millennial here. But oh well, the coffee is good, even if it is expensive. Anyway, some rambling uh, elevated parkways uh, you're seeing here. And I had this idea of dragging it out a bit into the bay so that you... You've got some pretty stunning views of the, the bay and uh, and all the good stuff if you uh, go out here. So that's just what I'm working on now. It's, uh, it's a bit finicky as a network, but in the end it actually it turns out working pretty nicely and looking nicely. And this park is uh, probably the most functional park I've ever created. And it's actually having a ton of visitors. Uh, but this is also a really high density area with uh, lots of people uh, living here and also quite a few uh, work workplaces lots of people commute here as well uh, so yeah i'm gonna leave you with some more time lapse
Oh yeah, we are moving on to create the neighborhood of Gold Hill. Uh, what you saw me wrap up with just before was just uh, basically upzoning a corner uh, on the southern part of downtown because I have added so much high density stuff lately that I felt it necessary to add yet another skyscraper. And Port Douglas is really starting to have a fantastic skyline. I mean, yeah, it's really nice. Anyways, Gold Hill. Uh, its immediate neighbor to the south is the neighborhood of uh, Hillside uh, and they share some characteristics. Uh, they initially started as really posh uh, row house neighborhoods for the wealthy of the city. But well, Hillside has uh, developed extremely fast in recent decades and seen a bunch of condo skyscrapers move in and new developments all, all around. Uh, then community efforts here in Gold Hill has been pretty successful in trying to maintain the original look and feel of the neighborhood. Which means that the density is actually pretty low for the location. It also means that like the, the price for properties here in Gold Hill is just ridiculous. It's, uh, you know, if you want, let's say you're on the market, you're fortunate enough to be on the market for a large single family house, you know, maybe a hundred years old, uh, almost a mansion, but not quite. If you're on the lookout for something like that and you want to be close to Port Douglas, then this is the spot because moving a bit up the hill here in not too many minutes, or actually it's probably going to be like 10 or 15 minutes because this is a big development. Anyways, later on in the episode, you'll see what I'm talking about. We are having some single family housing up here that is absolutely stunning beautiful traditional American architecture uh, mixed in with some of the uh, some more modern uh, mansions and yeah it'll be on the cul-de-sacs that I'm placing right now that we'll be seeing the single family development but just imagine having a house here you have you know it's not exactly quiet but you you have the feeling of living in a quiet suburb um, you know some traffic noise of course but lots of lots of greenery decently quiet streets but you're literally a five minute walk from the downtown core of port douglas so yeah very very fancy uh if you don't need an actual house but you want to live in a central location and in beautiful architecture i recommend the row houses we're placing right now because these assets are just gorgeous and i wanted to make them uh, a very uh, iconic feature of gold hill and the, yeah the iconic part, of course, is they've managed to preserve quite a few of them. There are some newer developments as the one we're placing right now. This is actually like a Dutch design and I'm using PO because once again, this is a very, very difficult lot to actually build up. It's such an awkward shape, you know, but the uh, Gold Hill really maintains a nice character and I'm very happy with how it turned out uh, and my voice is absolutely killing me right now so I'm going to leave you guys with some more time lapsing. Thank you. 